Hi guys, it's Ginger. I am here with another music review. This week it is the Rolling Stones new album, Blue and Lonesome. You guys, this is a wonderful album. Well, th let me put it to you like this. This is the first album I've ever bought from the Rolling Stones. Now, I have Sticky Fingers that's part of my dad's collection, but I've never been someone who was really into the Rolling Stones. But I love this album, and I know that they started out very bluesy to begin with. So this has turned into an homage to um, what they were inspired by, which was uh, American blues, um, southern blues, and also Chicago blues. Um, there are 12 tracks on here, and... Their liner notes are excellent. There's there's a whole story in here about about this album, the recording of this album, how it started out as an album of new music, but they kind of hit a brick wall and Keith Richards was like, "Let's play Blue and Lonesome," which is an old song that they used to play back in the day. So they started jamming on that, and next thing they next thing you know, they've decided to do a blues album. And this was actually cut in three days. It was finished in three days. And they sound amazing. They're all like a thousand years old, and all of these people sound amazing, play amazing. Mick Jagger's voice, Mick Jagger's voice is amazing. It has the complete story of the making of the album, plus the influence of the blues on their music. Um, it also has a story on several of the songs. It has the day that that each song was cut during the sessions. It also has a story of each of the songs, um, like, in origination of the song. So, like, the title track, Blue and Lonesome, was written by Walter Jacobs. It says, original by Little Walter, recorded on August 12, 1959. The original was released as... Checker 1117 coupled with Mean Old Frisco. It was not a hit on the Billboard R&B charts. So it gives the origins of the song. Okay, also another fun fact that they talk about in the... I mean, these liner notes are great. Um, another fun fact that they talk about in these liner notes is that they were recording um, in the same... A recording studio but in the next room from Eric Clapton when he was recording so they went over there and they pulled him over and on the second day of recording he actually recorded two songs with them um, the two songs that Eric Clapton is on is everybody knows about my good thing which I love I love it's so so good and Eric Clapton's playing slide guitar on it. And then also Can't Quit You Baby. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful album. And when I started listening to this, I hadn't read any of the liner notes. So I was like, ooh, this sounds like a really jammy type album. You know, they it has a very jam feel to it. And as it turns out, they recorded it in three days, and they were all in the same room, and it was a jam. So it has that very, see here's a picture of them recording inside of the, uh, the cover. And it, it has that wonderful blues jam feeling. Like, it kind of reminded me of when... I was in Memphis phew, uh, more than 10 years ago, uh, probably, uh, yeah, like 12, 13 years ago, 15 years ago, probably, um, 
I went to Memphis, and when you walk down Beale Street, there are these clubs that you'll hear music coming. They have the doors swung open, and there's music playing, and you can just, you know, walk in, and it'll be like a one or two drink minimum or something like that. And it's just, it's got that jam feel, and they've had, it's kind of like that in New Orleans, too. Um, I've been to Chicago, but I didn't go to any blues clubs when I was in Chicago. But um, this is so terrific. If you're a blues fan, this is great. If you're a Rolling Stones fan, this is great. This would make a great Christmas present for somebody who's a Stones fan or somebody who's a blues fan. So, uh, let me give you some of my favorites. Everybody knows about my good thing. I also liked Can't Quit You Baby. Hoodoo Blues was really good too. And there's stuff on here that was originally recorded by Little Walter, by Hal and Wolf, by um, Lightning Slim, Magic Sam, all kinds of really great, really great, so soulful. And you know, that's the reason why so many uh, English bands that came that came out uh, came onto the scene in the 60s were so amazing. It's because they were influenced by American blues. So pick this up. I give it a thumbs up. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed these reviews. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you can come back and sit for a spell. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.